I want to work through and discuss the resonance structures for the acetate ion. I think this is a very instructive example. So uh, let's draw out the Lewis structure for acetate. <clears throat> so this is acetate. Um, it's an ion. It has a negative charge with the formal charge in this oxygen. Um, it's the conjugate base for acetic acid. Uh, acetic acid, if you remember, it looks like that. This is the Lewis structure for acetic acid if you have some sort of a base. Um, deprotonate the proton. So let's say there's nucleophilic attack of the acidic hydrogen there. Um, you can deprotonate the proton and you'll end up creating a conjugate acid of that base, whatever that is. And you'll also um, create acetate. So this is the acetate ion. It has this extra pair of electrons on the oxygen, which gives it a negative overall formal charge. Um, if we wanted to calculate it, what you'd do is you'd go to the periodic table. You'd see that oxygen's in the 16th column. Things in this 16th column have six valence electrons and uh, six valence electrons if you have this uh, oxygen in this situation we have to figure out how many valence electrons are going to be accounted for for it and whether or not it increased or decreased in numbers of electrons from six valence electrons so here we have six lone electrons we allocate all of those to the oxygen and it has two bonding electrons in this bond we're going to allocate, according to formal charge rules, half of those to the carbon and half of those to the oxygen. It's kind of like a divorce. You split the assets down the middle. So one of the electrons goes to the oxygen formally. So that would be one electron from this bond and six from these lone pair electrons. So that's seven electrons overall. Guess what? Seven electrons overall. Well, that means that they're is one more electron than the six that oxygen starts from as a neutral element without any bonding. So gaining one electron to go from six valence electrons to seven valence electrons, that's adding one negative charge. So it's gonna have an overall negative charge instead of a zero charge or some kind of positive charge. Okay, so that's what acetate looks like. And let's think about the resonance structures of acetate. Well, uh, there's not really much to, to do here. Remember, Resonant structures can't break single bonds. They can't change which elements are actually bonded to other elements. They don't change the relative positions of elements in a molecule. They only change the bonding. So we would draw, really the only, only things to play with here that aren't single bonds, that have electrons, is this double bond and these lone pair electrons. So conceivably what I could do, oops, sorry, I forgot to draw two lone pairs of electrons on this oxygen. Sorry about that. All right, so this is a more complete, a better Lewis structure. So what I could do is I could actually draw a resonance structure that comes from pushing these electrons away from the oxygen, or I guess sharing them between the carbon and the oxygen in a double bond as opposed to this um, lone pair only being on the oxygen. I can't stop there. I can't just do this change because when I move these two electrons to this bond, make it a double bond, I'm going to have five bonds to carbon. That's 10 electrons surrounding carbon. You can't do that. You can't have more than an octet of electrons around carbon. In fact, just to be as complete as possible, any um, element in this second row, you can't have more than an octet. You can't have more than eight valence electrons around that element. So what that means for us is that we can't just draw this shift in electrons by itself. We have to have some other shift in electrons that takes electrons away from this carbon. Guess what? We can't change this single bond. Remember, we can't break single bonds. But we can move electrons away from carbon by pushing them to the other oxygen. So what this will do is it will create a resonance structure. And remember... If I want to draw resonance structures, I use this double-headed arrow to indicate resonance structures. And it's going to look like this. Uh, the arrows tell me what happened. So 
I know that uh, you know this arrow really means that these electrons are gone and that they've moved here to become a double bond. So those electrons got moved to this bond. That's what that arrow meant. I can erase it now because I've fulfilled its destiny. Okay. Then we have this other arrow, this other curved arrow, that is showing electrons moving from this double bond to this oxygen. So I can also fulfill its destiny. And uh, let's see, I gotta re remove one of these bonds, so it's now a single bond, and those electrons are gonna be pushed to that oxygen as lone electrons. Okay, now I have to think about formal charges, right? So this oxygen now has four bonding electrons and four non-bonding electrons. These four electrons get split down the middle between carbon and oxygen when we think about formal charges. Formal charges don't really reflect electronegativity. They're a formalism. They're not terribly in line with reality, but we use them anyway as an accounting gimmick, and it works uh, to keep our, our mind straight and to think about where the different electrons are. Basically, just to make sure that I'm not drawing more electrons than I should be drawing. You know, that like this whole thing has the same number of electrons as this whole thing, and there's no confusion about that. So, uh, it's an accounting gimmick. I split them down the middle. So, these four electrons, two go to the oxygen. Then it has four electrons all to itself. So, that's six electrons total. Remember that oxygen is in that group 16. So, guess what? It starts with six electrons, ends with six electrons. It is not negatively charged, it is neutrally charged. It started off neutral. It, it ends up neutral in this structure. Um, let me draw it a little bit closer. Okay. Uh, what about this oxygen? Well, it's got two bonding electrons, and we only allocate one of those to the oxygen, along with these six non-bonding electrons. That's seven electrons allocated to the oxygen, accounted for for that oxygen. And since oxygen starts off six as a neutral element with six valence electrons, guess what? We went to seven, that's an extra electron, that's an extra negative charge, so we put a negative charge there. Okay, two resonance structures, we're done because there's no other double bonds to really move around. Um, so what does this mean? Well, I can consider the entire molecule as being a combination of these two resonance structures. You'll notice that there really isn't a difference in terms of like what's happening in each of them. It just means this is only different from this one and that it draws a double bond to this oxygen and this one draws that double bond to another oxygen. So there's symmetry here really. Um, I couldn't say that this is any more important than this one. I couldn't say that one is lower energy than the other. There's a negative charge in this oxygen here. There's a negative charge in this oxygen on the other resonance structure. It doesn't matter. An oxygen is an oxygen is an oxygen. It doesn't matter. So they have equal weight. By symmetry, by the fact that I can't make a meaningful difference between them, I can't distinguish them, in terms of like which one would be more energetically favored, I can't say that one contributes more to the reality of this molecule than the other. So in real life, what you'd say is that acetate is going to have a one and a half bond between each of the, or sorry, inside of this carbon oxygen bond, also inside of this carbon oxygen bond. So I'll draw it. Um, so, all the CH bonds from before stay the same. The CC bond stays the same. Our resonance structures really had nothing to say about those. But uh, we could draw in those single bonds because we know we're going to have single bonds anyway. But what I can do is I can draw a bunch of dashes to indicate this is not just a single bond, but it's like one and a half bond. It's not a double bond, but it's kind of like one and a half bond. The double bond is kind of being shared between the two oxygens. Um, and I can go even further. And if I was to draw it like this, I'm not doing a great job in saying where the electrons are. So what I might do is, is draw in some electrons like that. Those are the ones that aren't in question. Remember that, you know, regardless of where you're at in these two 
resonance structures, each of these oxygens has at least four lone pair electrons, right? But somehow there's an extra, you know, minus charge in here. So you can draw it like that. And I, I even see people draw it like this. So what this shows is the minus charge being delocalized between the two oxygens and the carbon. This is exactly what Wikipedia shows. So here are the two resonance forms, the two contributors to acetate. We have a minus charge on this oxygen for one of them, and then we switch it around so the minus charge is on the other oxygen. And when you average them out, this is what the resonance hybrid looks like. I mean, there's not really a double bond favored for one oxygen versus the other. It's just spread out. That negative charge is spread out across the oxygens and the carbon. And, uh, you know, if you think about a model, what it would look like, or if you think of a crystal structure, it's not going to have a different length for the different CO bonds. So each acetate is going to have a CO bond that's the same between carbon and either of those oxygens. Come to think of it, I could actually come up with a third resonance structure which is less meaningful but we should still write it out because it has some contribution. And that would come from simply creating even more of a formal charge in the molecule by moving electrons from the remaining double bond to the oxygen. So. Let me draw that out again. So I just made a copy of the existing structure. And now what I'm going to do is make manifest what this du uh, double headed arrow means. So I'm going to erase the arrow. And what it was meaning, what that means in chemistry, is that the electrons from this double bond, one of those bonds, is going to be converted, or they're going to move to the oxygen. So that arrow, the curved arrow, moves two electrons from double bond to the oxygen. Now we have to do, do formal charges again. So um, like this oxygen, the oxygen that we changed is going to have a minus charge. But let's look at carbon. Carbon has four valence electrons as, as an element, as a neutral element. It has four valence electrons. I know this because it's in row, sorry, column 14 of the periodic table. And so we have to figure out, did it lose electrons? Did it gain electrons according to formal charge rules? So it has six bonding electrons as depicted. That means that it has three allocated to carbon. The other three are allocated to the elements those bonds go to. So three electrons to carbon. As a neutral element, it has four valence electrons. It now has three valence electrons. That means it lost a valence electron going from four to three. The loss of a negative charge is the gain of a positive charge. So I got to draw a plus charge here. OK. So in real life, this doesn't really change the symmetry of the molecule all that much. Uh, since both of these oxygens have minus charges, it's the least important resonance contributor. These two are equally important, and they're more important than this one. However, uh, it does tell us something about the chemistry of this uh, overall molecule. It tells us that this carbon has a partial positive charge on it. So if I was to average these out with more weight on these two than this one, the carbon would still have a little bit of a partial positive charge. And that's borne out in the reactivity of this uh, compound. Um, not so much in acetate, but when you protonate one of these oxygens, this ends up becoming an electrophilic or positive or electron liking, electron receiving uh, part of the molecule. So there's a hint here to the reactivity of this molecule and its conjugate acid. So all in all, these are the three 
resonance structures that you could draw for uh, acetate. We've exhaustively gone through everything. We've moved the double bond from one oxygen to the other, and we've even got rid of the double bonds. That's really all you can do. And uh, this is what its structure looks like if you try to average out all of the different resonance forms, the different resonance contributors. I hope this helped. I hope you learned something, and I have more examples if you want them.